Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Taco Tuesday. Um, we are here at Joe Boo's Man Cave doing a little bit of work and stuff at the Red Brick House. And we have official word that it is now finally official that Mike Zimmer is hired by the Dallas Cowboys. And I dare say that maybe the players might be put on notice that we are going to do things a little bit differently. There's a new sheriff in town, and he takes no BS. And that may be exactly what the Dallas Cowboys need. Also, too, apparently the Cowboys have kicked things into gear. Um, finally, um, after sitting pat for so long waiting for Dan Quinn to make his move on whether or not he was going to be coming back, you'll remember the Cowboys said if Dan Quinn does not get a head coaching job, we will be bringing him back, in which case it seemed like they were just sitting on their ass assuming that he was going to come back. Um, however, he's not back. He's not going to be coming back. He's the coach of the Washington Commanders. And with them, he took Joe Witt and also um, Aiden Durd, we lost as defensive coordinator going to the Seattle Seahawks. So that means you've got defensive line and passing game coordinator that are missing and still to be filled. What will be interesting to see is what exactly the Cowboys do with Al Harris. Does he stay as a D-backs coach or does he get elevated to the passing game coordinator? And now we need a defensive line coach as well. And apparently the Cowboys had decided to that they had their sights set on their man um, and they were going to the New York Giants about uh, Andre Patterson, who worked under Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer picked up the phone and said, hey, we're getting the band back together. We're getting the band back together, and I'd like to get you there. But the New York Giants did exactly what the Cowboys did to Dan Quinn. They denied him permission to because he's under contract with them and if you're under contract with somebody they do not have to allow you to be able to speak with that person so that's where we found out it was denied so the Cowboys coaching search is going to have to go on and getting this thing together if there's anything to be positive about with the Dallas Cowboys right now if there's anything to be happy or excited to think maybe just maybe and I was told that I'm being too negative but um, I'm going to look at this as we need to be negative we need to be negative because as as much as everybody you know wants to trash us and just say we suck the thing is is we haven't put forth full effort to really get this thing together we've been half-assing it or I should say Jerry Jones has been half-assing it um, and until we actually look and say, are we going to do things like going all in? Are we going to go through and fill up holes? Or are we just going to do the same stuff we do? Take a Tyro Crawford and say he's an edge rusher and a tackle, and we're going to take, you know, a safety and make him a linebacker, and we're just going to kind of, you know, just say we believe in our own guys and knowing that the, your own guys – be it they are good players, but they're not good enough to play multiple roles. Stop that. And until they do, we're going to be stuck in the same spot. So they're trying to at least get their coaching staff together, and they're working on getting Dak and apparently CeeDee Lamb um, jobs done. If they can get those two done, then they're going to have some cash to be able to actually be a player um, in free agency. And maybe, just maybe for once, you know, there is a sense of urgency with Jerry Jones that maybe he really will say, you know what, son, I don't give a rat's ass about what happens to the team after I'm gone. I just need me another trophy, and we're going to do this thing. And he throws Stephen Jones against the wall and says, you're going to do this. So that is my hopes. That is my dreams. I tell you, I am tired I am so tired of waiting and listening to all of the people that want to give me trash. Talk about my team, my players. Tell me how much we suck. I'm sick and tired of that. 
I want to be in the Super Bowl and win again. I, I and I think we as fans, for all that we've done for you, Jerry Jones, for all of the waiting and believing and buying of merchandise and going to the games and to training camp and the star and everything else, you we, we deserve at least a full effort out of you. And remember, you know, Jerry, I still don't know why you, you did what you did, but you did what you did. Just, Jerry, take a lesson from one of the best coaches the Cowboys ever had and think about the things that y'all did together to make that 90s team. You're up, and then James Harris. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, let me first say congratulations on getting into the Hall of Fame. Uh, watching that live on television, that raw emotion was just beautiful. Um, I have so many questions for you. I think about the only way I could get them in is to get a cooler beer and head out on, <laughs> and go fishing with you. <laughs> right, Mark. But um, leaving the University of Miami and coming to the Dallas Cowboys, and at that time they were basically broke, busted, and thoroughly disgusting to watch. Having gone from the pinnacle down to the depths, what was that like? And the second part of this question would be, I uh, played football at JMU with Charles Haley and knowing the character that he is and all the personalities that you had with the Cowboys, how were you able to mold them and keep them focused on the grand prize, which was winning? Well, you know, first of all, you know, you know, people look back on it and, and they say it was an easy decision to leave the University of Miami. You know, but, you know, we had gone through four straight seasons where we played a national schedule and been on national television every other week and only lost two regular season games. And so we had a powerhouse football team and I knew it was going to continue that way because we had a great, you know, group of talent. And then going to Dallas, you know, Tom Landry is one of the greatest coaches of all time. Mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, they had had three straight losing seasons there at the bottom of the NFL at three and 13 because they just didn't have any talent. And, you know, and obviously there were some older players that uh, helped us, uh, you know, in winning our Super Bowls. But a lot of it had to do with, you know, I, I brought in Tony Wise, my offensive line coach, and he he put together what is considered one of the greatest offensive lines in, in NFL history. But he did it with a, a free agent defensive tackle, Mark Tuane, at left tackle. He did it with a left guard where the previous staff said get rid of him because he was too fat, Nate Newton. <laughs> we took a, a third-round pick, a 245-pound offensive guard. I asked Tony, I said, can you convert him to a center? He said, I'll make him into a center. So we moved St uh, Stepnoski to center. And then we took a seventh-round pick, Kevin Gogan, uh, who had – struggled his early years we moved him to guard and took a third round pick eric williams at right tackle so you know those players hadn't developed but tony wise was able to develop them into a great offensive line and so you know the combination of having some great assistant coaches and acquiring a lot of talent with 51 trades in five years we were able to win that super bowl so it was a great feeling thank you very much on that I'll follow up you about Charles Haley. Yes, he's a character. <laughs> he's he a, a character, character but he loop. is one of my favorites. Uh, uh, you know, Charles and I developed a great relationship after a few uh, rocky roads uh, there early in his career at Dallas. Uh, we had a couple of run-ins, but we, we really got together. You know, really, he came into my office after I had berated him a, a couple of times at, at one of the ball games. And he said, Coach, he said, if you will just get on to me one-on-one -on -one in your office, he said, I'll do anything in the world for you. I, I love playing for you. He said, but just don't embarrass me in front of the other players. And I said, you know, Charles, I, I, I may not always be able to do that, but I'll try. But from that time forward, we had a great relationship, and he was a big part of us winning Super Bowls. Thank you very much. And how about them Cowboys? <laughs> I should have trademarked that. <laughs> James Harris. There you have it. 
So, Jerry, take a lesson. Not everybody has to be a first-round pick, but you've got to be bringing in players and you've got to have coaches who can develop and get the most out of them. And we know that Jerry Jones, excuse me, that Jimmy Johnson was a motivator, you know, and we need to see more. Uh, Mike McCarthy, you could take a few cues from Jimmy Johnson. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, you're up to date with everything that is the Dallas Cowboys. Peace out.